the enemy. Before we need to put on the armor, we need to find out uh, like what we're up against. And so Paul, in writing to the church at Ephesus, he warned them about their enemy and how to handle the attacks. And uh, so uh, we, need to, we need to look at that. Over in chapter 6, we're going to read verse 10 through 12. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers uh, over this present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. And then he begins with the word, therefore. And that would be what we just read. That we're, um, because of uh, the fact that we are in a battle, we need to put on the armor of God. And so... We're going to talk tonight about the enemy, so if you turn back to Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to read just a few verses here, beginning at verse 1. And there, and you were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. And we'll stop right there. So tonight, uh, first of all, we need to realize that if uh, Paul is writing here to the church at Ephesus, and he's writing about um, their spiritual uh, strengths and weaknesses and so on and so forth, He's giving out theology, that's the first couple chapters, and then he puts application at the end, which he does in almost all of his writings. But here, uh, he tells us, he reminds us who we used to be. So, everybody that's ever lived on this planet um, has uh, started out dead in our trespasses and sins, verse 1. And he says, that's where you once walked. And now, so we are still walking dead in our trespasses and sins, if we haven't surrender our life to Christ, uh, and we're following the course of this world, and we're following the prince of the power of the air. So in other words, we are under the devil's guidance. We are manipulated by him, uh, and we are sons of disobedience until we come to know Jesus as our Savior. Uh, and we uh, then, through faith, uh, and some of your Bibles probably have a heading on this chapter talking about grace through faith, then we come to Christ and we are no longer one of his, uh, the devil's children. We're one of God's children. When we become one of God's children, then the devil, he doesn't quit and go away. He just bangs harder against us in different avenues. And we're going to talk about them tonight. So the first thing we want to look at is our enemies. What is our enemies? And the Bible lists three of them here for us. Number one is the world. Look at verse one and two. You were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world. And so our enemies, not first enemy is the world. Uh, the world is not the globe. Uh, it's the system around us that is opposed to God. And it caters to the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and, and the pride of life. Over in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15, 16, and 17, it's called, often called there the society uh, apart from God. In other words, the behavior, the lifestyle, everything that's away from God, the world. And so our enemies is the world. If you don't believe me, go home tonight and, uh, and, and look at any advertisement on the internet or on television. And it only takes you a couple of seconds to see that our enemy is the world. The devil uses the activities of the world to distract us from obedience to God. And that can be something as simple as uh, well, let me just go back to Sunday for a second, okay? Uh, that could be something as simple as the Super Bowl. So the activities of this world, you say, well, there's nothing wrong with the Super Bowl. It, there isn't if it leads us astray from, but if it leads us astray from Christ, it is. Or it could be our, our job. It could be a, a million things that the devil likes to use against us. So our first enemy in verses 1 and 2, I'm just going by the way they're listed, uh, not prioritizing them, is the world. The second one in verse 2 is the devil. Following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. So our other, uh, another enemy we have is the devil himself. Of course, he manipulates the world, but he's also 
uh, the devil himself is working in uh, or against us all the time. He's opposed to all that God is and all that God does and all that God desires for us. So think about it. All that God is, all that God does, and all that God de desires for us, Satan is against. The evil one is opposed to that. And so he is busy attacking us every day in whatever avenue he can. And he does not show up in our lives as this guy in a red outfit with a, with a uh, you know, fiery spear or something that we often picture, uh, see pictures of the devil. The devil shows up in many lustrous ways with the intent of distracting us and, and dry, dragging us away, uh, slowly away from the Lord. So we have the world, the devil, and then verse 3 says the flesh. He says, among whom we all once lived in the passions of, of our flesh. He's talking here about our goals, our ide ideas, our ideals, our, our, all of we were centered about was our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body. The word body there actually is translated other places from the original text in the Greek as flesh and the mind, and whereby nature, children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. And so uh, the old person who we used to be, uh, that we inherited, that inheritance we got from Adam, it, it was opposed to God in every aspect. And if you look at verse 3, he said, we lived out the passions of our flesh. He said, we carried out the desires of our body. And he says, uh, and, he, and we carried out the de desires of our mind. And he said, we were n by nature children of wrath. We were at war against God like the rest of mankind. So we fit in with the rest of the world. Romans chapter 7, verse 14 through 20 uh, talks about this. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin, Paul writes. For I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me. So even in our best days, the Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. And so Paul says, nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. And all of us should say amen to that. Verse now 20. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells within me. That's the battle of the flesh. You, uh, If you open to Romans 7, uh, 14 through 20, you might run to write yourself a note next to it and say the battle of the flesh, because that's what he's talking about there, this war that rages inside of us. So that's our enemies. And so <clears throat> next, we're going to talk about the actual enemy himself. Uh, and uh, a lot of churches don't talk about the devil because, uh, you know, people feel that's too negative and we shouldn't talk about him. I think we need to know who we're up against. Uh, I don't think we should celebrate him. I don't think we should, you know, uh, uh, be excited about him, but we should definitely know what we're dealing with. And, of course, I've said before, if the Bible talks about it, then we're supposed to talk about it. So, uh, but we are not to be overrun. We are not to be overtaken by him um, and, and, his, uh, um, and his actions. Uh, so I don't know. If that is correct, I think that is incorrect. It is uh, incorrect. We should be on number one. So I don't know if we if I skipped one accidentally. If I did, then don't go by what's on the screen. Just listen to me. So first of all, the enemy has a leader. The enemy has a leader. And of course, the leader is Satan, okay? And so the first thing I want you to know about that is Satan's origin. Isaiah 14 12 through 15 talks about that. I'm not going back there tonight and read all that. But there, uh, there's a lot of questions. I, we had a discussion at the jail uh, ministry last time from somebody who wanted to uh, know, you know uh, how we know who he is and stuff. And I said, have you read Isaiah? Yeah. Uh, so, but he didn't get the message that was there. Uh, but uh, the Bible tells us exactly what he's doing and how he's doing it. It's very clear. Uh, we see his beginning and who he is. Satan's origin. Second thing we see is uh, the Bible tells us about Satan's names. Uh, there, there's biblical names that describe God, and there's bi bi biblical names also describing Satan. And so let me give you a few of those. Devil. 
The word devil actually means an accuser. It means one who accuses you. The Bible says that he is one who accuses the brethren. Romans 12, 7 through 11 talks about the devil. Uh, the, then we find the word Satan in the scripture defining the devil or Satan or whatever you want to call him. And that word actually means adversary, the one who is fighting us, the Satan, doing battle with us. Matthew chapter 4, verse 3 calls him the tempter. Uh, the tempter came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. You all remember that text. Uh, the tempter. And so he's the tempter. A lot of names for Satan. Uh, John 8, 44 calls him the murderer. Uh, Jesus was talking of Satan. He said he is a murderer from the beginning. And so he's referred to as a murderer. Uh, also in John 8, 44, we see that he's called a liar. Jesus said uh, he does not stand in tr the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is the liar and the father of lies. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Paul refers to him as the God of this age. All these are names uh, referring to uh, Satan. Uh, and it also gives us a picture of what he's doing and who he is. Uh, and, and he's also referred to as, uh, or compared to a lion and a serpent in 1 Peter chapter 5, and also in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And so those names, just like the biblical names of God tells us a little bit about God, the, the Bible names for Satan tells us about who he is. So we have, he's a leader, uh, he's the leader and he has an origin, and his names tell us a little bit about him, but he also has limits. He is not equal with God. He is not all-powerful. He's not all-knowing. He's not everywhere. Uh, so when people try to tell you that Satan is Jesus' brother, that's not true. Uh, Satan is, uh, is a, an angel who went uh, against God and was cast out of heaven. He is not equal to God. Praise God. Uh, God has a reign on Satan because things would be a whole lot worse uh, than it is. Okay, next, number two, maybe we'll catch up to our notes now. Uh, the enemy has capability, has capability. He has, uh, the Bible tells us in John 10.10 10, that he's a thief. He's a thief. He comes to only to steal, kill, and destroy. He is a thief. We all know that because the Bible tells us that, that he's a thief. So if you have joy in your life, guess what Satan wants to take? Joy. If you, you know, he cannot take your salvation because you're sealed. Uh, until the day of redemption, you're sealed in Christ, but he can try to take your joy. He can try to take uh, your, your effort, your service to the Lord, uh, you know, and he has all kinds of ways to do that. Uh, and most of them are, are uh, lies. Well, not most of them. All of them are lies. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, he has capability because he's very smart. Second Corinthians tells us in chapter 2, verse 11, so you are not outwitted by Satan. For we, do, we are not ignorant of his designs. Paul is saying there that Satan is very smart, and we are not to be outwitted by him. We need to know what we're up against, and we need to put on the armor of God uh, so that we can not be outwitted by Satan. Okay, And then the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians again, 11, 14, that Satan disguises himself. Most of the time when Satan shows up in our life, he does not look like we would expect him to. He does not talk like we expect him to. He does not behave or act or attack or anything like we expect him to. Paul wrote, Satan disguises himself as the angel of light. So he comes roaring into the picture, looking pretty nice and fancy. And everybody's like, look at that, look at that. Um, you know, it's, I've always, I've, as an illustration, I've said this for years, uh, when the old Marlboro man was the advertisement in magazines, they, you never saw a picture of a guy dying of lung cancer. You see this cowboy, you know, that everybody wants to be like him. And that's the way Satan is. He comes into our life, disguises himself as someone else or in some way so that we look at him, we get caught up in him. Next thing we know, we're in trouble. He, is, he has capability. Thirdly, he has helpers. He has helpers. I hope none of them are here tonight. Uh, but uh, Ephesians 6.12 tells us uh, that Satan is limited, uh, but he does accomplish so much. He has help. And so the first thing we see in Revelation 12, 4 is that he has angels. He has angels. 
it says, his tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. The dragon, referring to the dragon there. He has angels. The Bible says one third of the angels were taken out of heaven or, or followed him, however you want to put it, and, and serve him. So he has angelic beings. We call them demons, okay? Uh, we give them a little bit of a different name, but uh, they're the same thing. They, they are his helpers. The other thing I said, I hope none are here tonight, his helpers or people or men. Uh, Ephesians 4.14 says, Paul told Timothy, he said, to walk like God, that you may no longer be carried about by every wind of doctrine, by, every, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. He's talking about people coming into the church and stealing people out of the church. He says, don't get caught up in that. Our battle isn't with the men, but the one who controls them. And so there are people that go into the church uh, who don't want to follow after the Lord. They may be putting on a good show. They may not be saved, or they may be saved, but walking in their own, uh, as we go back to the beginning of the study, walking in their own flesh. And, 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 and next thing you know, they're trying to destroy things. They're trying to destroy people. They're trying to pull down the work of God. Uh, so he has helpers. Some of the people that you know in your life, that say they're Christians or helpers of Satan. And you can be a helper of Satan and be a believer uh, because of the fact that you're carrying out his wants, his desires, and you're actually hurting the cause of Christ. Okay, to finish up tonight, I want to bring uh, over to Ephesians chapter 6 again, uh, verses 10 and 11. We read them earlier, but we're going back there. And so Paul, in, in describing about the work of Satan and so on and so forth, and he's, he's going through here, if you look back over the book of Ephesians, he talks about uh, the new life we have in Christ, and he talks about uh, walking in Christ, and so on and so forth. And he gets over here, he talks about husbands and wives, all that happens in Ephesians, and he gets down here to chapter 6, verse 10, and he begins this study that we're going to be talking about, the whole armor of God, and he, uh, uh, he gives us um, uh, uh, instruction here to show us about uh, Satan's power and what we need to be. So let's look at a couple of things. First of all, verse 10, uh, finally, meaning he's bringing the book to an end. Finally, I've given you all this information. I've given you five, well, actually six and a half chapters of information uh, in this letter to you people at Ephesus. And I want, you to, I want to bring it to an end. He says, finally, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So the first thing we need to do is be strong. We need to be strong. How, look what he says. There's a couple key words in this uh, verse. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. It doesn't say be strong in your power, and it doesn't say be strong in your might, because I have news for you. Uh, greater is he, Jesus, who is in us than uh, he who is in the world, which is Satan, but greater is Satan than you and I. We cannot do battle against him on our own. We are to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So number one, be strong. In verse 11, he says, put on the whole armor of God. Uh, so we need to be equipped. We need to be equipped. If we're going to stand up uh, and walk after God and not be constantly beat to death by Satan, we need to be equipped. And I want you to notice some words here. He says, uh, put on the whole armor of God. Put on what I want to wear. No, put on the whole armor of God. And you'll see how this comes together as we study about this. But I want you to notice what is not here. It does not say put on your plans. It does not say put on your equipment. It does not say put on your church's ideas. It says put on the armor of God. And if you read on down through verses 10 down to verse 20 uh, before next week, you'll see that he gives specific orders about specific things and exactly the purpose and why to wear them and everything is there. So we are to be a strong, number one. Number two, be equipped. Look at verse 11. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. We are to be ready. Now, you, you notice here it doesn't say if he comes against you. It pretty much tells us we need to be ready because he will come against us. Uh, that you may be able to stand uh, against the schemes of the devil. Not be able to stand uh, if he attacks it says, be able to stand against the, uh, the, the schemes of the devil. A couple key words here is the word stand, meaning that we're not surrendering and we're not getting knocked down and we're not getting beat up. We are standing in Christ. 
And then he, the next key word I want you to notice is the word scheme, because we go back to what he said before. He is capable, he has avenues, he's working constantly. And if we stay close to the Lord uh, and we are equipped with the armor of God, uh, when he brings out his schemes against us, we will see them, we'll be ready to do battle against them. So it's not if he comes against us. I got news for you tonight. If you know Jesus, he is uh, the Satan is going to attack you. Uh, and he probably does every day. Uh, praise the Lord for the, the angels of God who protect us. But we are also to protect our own selves by putting on the armor of God. We'll pick up there, Lord willing, next week. Let's pray. Lord, thank you tonight for the opportunity to study your word. Thank you for the book of, book of Ephesians, Lord. And I ask you to help us to understand this one very very important and very powerful portion of scripture. And Lord, may we be people who practice it. And Lord, tonight, I ask you, Lord, to keep us away from the schemes of the evil one. May we see them, and Lord, may we avoid them, and may we not get caught up in them. Thank you for each one that's here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.